What we got right here is a chamfering tool that uh, I, I built. Uh, my biggest 82 degree chamfering tool is this three quarter inch one right here which is made out of high speed steel. And uh, I needed something that could go a bigger diameter. And so I just got me a box of these Miltech inserts. Let me grab that so you can get the number on it. But they're, they're square inserts. And if you're interested in the number, uh, that's the one that I'm using. That's a power shear. I got 30 thousandths corner uh, radiuses on there. And uh, <coughs> if you hand relieve the back part of this insert right here a little bit, you can get down to about a 300 thousandths diameter hole. And so that's what I did with just a quick chamfer for a 5 16 screw there. And then you can also use it for a drill. I start out with a three quarter inch hole and then I just plunge this as a three quarter inch piece of coal roll. And because this is sticking out just a little bit and that's a 990 diameter, uh, that gives me a, a one inch in I think 56 or 58 thousandths diameter hole on there. You also, if you got slots and stuff, you can just run that as a chamfering tool and run through there. Uh, the thing uh, with this power shear and the dish in the face, uh, it actually gives you almost a mirror finish. And coral steel is hard when it comes to like boring to get a good finish. But this right here uh, has just a tremendous uh, finish. I'll show you uh, a blueprint uh, before the video is done that you can look at on there. And uh, uh, anyhow, actually I might do that right now. Uh, but you can make the shank as long as you want because I'm going to use this mainly for an 82 degree chamfering tool. Uh, I, I, I went with uh, about a two inch length of the shank. But, uh, oops, yeah, this is the right one. But uh, if you wanted to build one, you can take a, a, a screen dump of this. And basically, it's got the pocket size that you need and the dimensions that you need but you can make the shank itself as long as you want on there and uh, so the the main step in there is coming right down to the center line of the part and then the pocket depth uh, is 185 thousandths and uh, what I do when it comes over here to the uh, putting the screw in there that insert measures 620 by 620, so 310 and 310 would be center line, but I always like to go a little bit less, so I went 308 and 308, and what that does, it pulls the insert in to the pocket, so you don't have to worry about it loosening up. I just used a straight end mill, sharp corner, uh, to do this, <coughs> but if you really wanted to do it nice, you'd get a 20 degree uh, tapered end mill because these inserts uh, let's see these inserts they have a 20 degree relief on the back and it makes them excellent choice for, for this type of a cutter so yeah at a, about a 20, 20 degree uh, <coughs> what you have here because I was cutting this in a v-block and my V-block is kind of thick. I, I used the best end mill I had uh, at the time. And uh, it was like a 5 16 And all that is doing is providing a relief when the square insert is sitting there. It's providing a relief in there so that you're not hitting that back corner. And uh, you could use, if you got the reach and you got the tools, I mean, you can, you can do an eighth inch end mill. You can do a quarter inch end mill. Uh, but uh, the length that I had to reach was quite long, so I just went with the 5 16 And all I need is something that will stop uh, in two directions on there. Uh, what we're going to do today <coughs> is because I have this one, and I have my high-speed steel ones. This one will go from about a 300 thousandths diameter hole uh, up to about a 1 inch uh, diameter hole. And so I'm going to make another one today, and what we're going to do this time, I'm going to uh, make it an inch and a quarter. So uh, it will be a bit bigger, and then 
uh, somewhere down the line I may make an inch and a half or one bigger and maybe even uh, use two inserts I got something drawn for that already uh, and we'll see how it goes and uh, I know I'll probably be making another one of this size right here at a 90 degree angle uh, so uh, I can chamfer the holes in, uh, in, the, in these squareness uh, checkers right here uh, that is actually a 90 degree uh, countersink and uh, so uh, it wouldn't be as good for that and so in the future I'll be making one for that even though I have a bought high speed steel one that will do that size so anyhow <coughs> let's get on with the build so you can see what's going on and uh, by the way by the way uh, Everything that was done on that round tool was done right here on the mill. Uh, I got a small lathe. I could have done some of the work on there. But there's a lot of people out there, they only have a mill. And so I wanted to show you how you can do this with a mill. This is my arbor right here. I got a quarter 20 set screw in there. This is the part that I'll be making. And I already roughed it out because a lot of people have seen how I do this. Uh, for the others who haven't. I got it real close and we'll just uh, put it in real quick and finish it up. And so it just take a few minutes for setup here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make that shank a 750 diameter fit uh, for the collet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this diameter uh, down uh, uh, to 1 inch 240, 10 thousandths uh, below the nominal. One inch 252. So we'll need 12 thousandths, and that means I'll go six on the digital. This dimension, it's nominal. If it's within a few thousandths, it's going to be good. Basically, just gives me clearance. Yeah, so we're one two thirty nine and six tenths right now, and that'd be perfect. What I'm going to do now is because this step that I'm establishing over there, I'm going to go with three quarters. So I'm going to put a three quarter gauge block in there. diameter I want it to actually look pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and I got it on the slowest speed
Okay, we're about 749. So that'll work. It'll be a nice uh, fit for a three quarter inch collet. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to take this off. And uh, this is what you end up with. We got a three quarter shank down here. We got an inch two forty up there, and the insert will get laid in there. Uh, the next step we'll set up, and we're going to cut uh, uh, a forty one degree angle on that. And so we're going to probably turn the camera off and get set up and come back to this. So what I did is I took this V block and I loaded my chamfering tool in there and you got to tighten that down really nice and tight I got my cutting edge over here uh, when I use a v-block in the vise I always like to leave it uh, uh, with the, the V the V going uh, this direction rather than 90 degrees uh, the other way because if you use the V-block the other way and you put something with a bigger piece of diameter and you're pushing into it with this jaw, it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure in this direction against those 45s. Uh, and if the V-block is like 60 Rockwell or higher, uh, I've seen people put so much pressure on there not realizing what they're doing and the V-block would split in half. This way you'll never have that problem. So anyhow, uh, what I did is I just uh, used this uh, scale in here and I popped it up there and I kind of eyeballed it to halfway. Let me get my hand out of the way here. Uh, just kind of eyeballed it halfway uh, there to line it up, you know, just eyeballing it uh, to center. What we'll do next is we'll take the arbor that we just cut and we'll put that in a three quarters inch collet. And this is how we're going to put that 41 degree angle on. And I'll have to step it. I'm going to have, and I'm just going to eyeball up in this direction uh, with about a 5 16 diameter step roughly. If you take little bites, yeah, I'll just take and measure that. Uh. And, and again, this this dimension is not really that critical. Uh, if I want to use this for a drill, I got on the print on the other one. Uh, uh, about a 5 16 this is about a quarter inch and that'll work fine and probably even a little better uh, clearance if I'm going to use this for a drill always remember to hit that in reverse there we got our angle a 41 degree angle put on the part this is 41 so therefore that one will be 41 and that uh, will work for uh, 82 degree included angle on a chamfering tool and so what I'll do now is I'll just 
slow it down a little bit and we'll hit it with a file to knock those sharp edges off that's all going to be clearance there again nothing critical and what we're going to do next is we're going to set uh, this up in the v-block and we're going to mount that at 81 uh, or 41 degrees per side on the vise and when we get uh, uh, this set up uh, actually we're going to move over to the granite table so I can show you the setup on that okay this is the setup we got I got my 10 inch uh, sign uh, plate set up so that it's at a 41 degree angle and then what we do is we just indicate this uh, in until it's nice and uh, true with it and when I pull that off then I know that this block is set up at the 41 degree angle now here's something uh, we got some uh, prototype V blocks that uh, uh, we've been making and uh, uh, sometime down in the future we'll add it on our product list but I got to catch up with a lot of orders uh, uh, health reasons I've been kind of out of commission for about a year now and just finally starting to feel better so uh, but anyways uh, one of the things we do in our v-blocks is we add these counter bore holes over here so I got just one screw hold mat and I got it down nice and tight and when I did the original smaller chamfering tool uh, in the mill that's all I needed I just took light cuts and it worked fine but uh, I had a couple friends that are, are making these and uh, uh, they didn't have the v-block with the holes in there and they just used finger clamps and in both cases uh, uh, they, they moved and uh, so uh, if you do this uh, and you don't have the holes in the side like that uh, you can always uh, have something set up uh, like so where you can actually uh, give you a little bit of help by uh, blocking them in and so you can put a rail on this side and get that snug down real nice and tight and then you can put one along this side And then I can add one in the back here. And that will give me a lot more uh, stability. I'll be able to take a bigger depth of cut and everything with this and not have to worry about this moving. So we'll, we'll move back over to the mill and we'll start cutting the pockets. Okay, what I did off camera already I've loaded in a half inch end mill and here's the thing if your v-blocks are real wide you're going to need a long reach with your end mill uh, so what I did I come down to I just barely touched on this 1 240 uh, diameter here and we're going to cut that first relief in and come all the way down to the center line I know I got some threads going through here uh, but it was uh, uh, the best block I had uh, to make this and so I knew I was going to have some threads left but I think most of those are going to disappear by the time I do the block and if they don't I don't believe they're going to be uh, by the cutting edge and it won't make a difference so anyhow the first thing I, I set zero right there and at 1 2 40 divided by 2 we want to go 620 thousandths deep I'm going to figure that I probably took a thousandths off on my touch off so I'm gonna go 619 I'll actually go 615 and now leave about four for cleaning up uh, and actually I'm gonna have to go deeper in that because I got to get a reference from the side yet so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come and I'm gonna lightly touch the side of the part one of the other things you want to do is you want to have it uh, so that uh, you, you st stick this out a little bit so you got clearance for your end mill uh, so it doesn't hit your v-block when you're coming across there here I'm just barely touching 
and uh, this will be a good reference for me. I'll set my digital in the X, and what I'll do is I'll come back up now, and lower them apart. So that I'm at uh, the halfway, and like I say, I'll just go 615 right now. And when I'm going this way, I'm going to go ahead and I'll feel comfortable with 30 thousandths at a time. When I make it to that end, I'm going to only wind in 10 thousandths to come back the other way. But you want to snug the Y axis down so that you don't get the backlash causing you troubles. And I'm going to go a total of uh, 580,000 on this direction. If your setup's not as rigid, take lighter cuts. And for this operation, you want the part actually clamped in there real good and tight as well. Because this, this is the part where if something's going to move, it's going to move in this operation. Three hundred and seventy right now. There's five hundred and ten. That was five seventy. About five seventy five. <coughs> Excuse me, 580. And it was close. It didn't uh, leave much clearance for the half inch end mill in the back. And so what we have now is we have this notch down to the center line of the part. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a pocket in there now with a 5 16 end mill. And I'm using the 5 16 end mill because I need the length. Uh, and uh, if you got a shorter length, uh, you can get by with a a shorter end mill uh, and a smaller diameter and here's where you're going to want to use a sharp corner uh, end mill rather than a, a, a radius on the ends of the cutting tips so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this in And set my end mill height. Yeah, I got her, so I should be able to cut that 185 thousandths depth pocket on there. And uh, so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lock that down. And I'm just going to ink this up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. Just touch the top surface here for reference. There, I'm just touching. Because I uh, forgot to bring that last four thousandths on there. My pocket depth uh, was, I believe... Uh, 185 I'm going to go 189 all together but what I'm going to do I'm just going to do this in uh, 
uh, probably 25 thousandths depth of cut of bites here. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to reference this back wall. My flute length isn't as tall as the wall, so there. So I'm just touching that. I'll set X back off a thou. Set X again, and I should be good on that back wall. So the other thing I want to do. I got it set for cutting 25 thousandths and I'm just going to cut me a path in there right now. And to establish, to establish where I want to be in that way, I'm just going to come up and just eyeball it uh, to where uh, the angle and the straight start. There. and what I'll do is I'll set the Y zero. So right now I'll come in to zero in the uh, X. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go that way, 176. And what that will do is to put uh, the center line of this end mill, it'll put it 20 thousandths past that back wall. So that will give me the proper clearance that I need when I put that square insert in. And if you have a different size end mill, you'll have a different size figure. There's twenty five thousandths. Here's 50. Come back to zero. Zero in the Y. And go to zero in the X. One seventy five past zero for clearance. Actually, one seventy six. And you can see that uh, that uh, screw pocket will be out by the time I'm done here okay we just finished up the pocket so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, set this up so that we can drill the 1032 hole in there and uh, the reason I'm gonna do that now I still gotta knock some stock off the top there uh, I'm gonna do that now I'm gonna set the coordinates with this end mill uh, so what I'm gonna do with this end mill because it's a 5 16 end mill, I'm going to go 152 and 2 tenths. That way, reset zero. So I know now that uh, the center line of the end mill is on that wall. What I'll do is over here now, because I stopped at zero, I'm going to go 156 
156 and 2 tenths and set zero on that axis and while I'm at it and I've done that I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and uh, knock that top off because I got my reference for the 1032 screw in here already and we'll just leave it like that and just getting rid of extra material you don't need you can see by the time we put the pocket depth in there, that quarter 20 screw that I had in the end, it's all gone now. So what I'm going to do now that I got zero set on those edges, I'm going to wind the 308 and the 308. So we're going to drill and tap this for 1032. It's always rough breaking through uh, on something that's curved on the bottom, so you always take it easy. At that point, it's an easy way to snap a drill, especially a small one. Put a chamfer on there. It's always nice to put the chamfer before you tap, and then that way, if you tap it first and then chamfer, you always got to run a tap through again because the chamfer will mess up the first few threads. I tighten that so that uh, it will slip most time before it breaks and as you can see it would just slip and I'd put a little more down pressure and then it would go. Uh, if you tighten it really tight and it binds or anything and then a lot of times that's how you break a tap. So let's grab an insert and we'll grab a, a screw. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna pull that out just real quick a minute because what I'm gonna wanna do is I wanna ink underneath there and I wanna scribe a line because we wanna cut this excess material off. And I'll just use the scribing tool from my height gauge. Get me a line scribed in there. Because what we want to do is remove all that excess material. And that will be plenty close, just eyeballing it to the line, left a little heavy. There's a 20 degree relief on there, so the cutting edge will be exposed a little bit. And so what we'll do, uh, I'll take this off and I will deburr that and then uh, we'll put an insert in there and we'll be back. Uh, I'll set up over here uh, and we'll see how it performs. Okay, here's the finished product. Uh, this is a hole I made with our smaller tool right here. That's a one inch and about 58 thousandths. Uh, we'll see if we can chamfer on there and then uh, we'll see what size hole that that will actually make as well. We're cutting like butter. Look at that. Um, can you zoom on that cat to see that finish or not? Yeah, it's yeah. got like a mirror finish on there. Just beautiful finish. Let's see if we can drill a hole with it now. That's the one drawback is uh, you got the stringers on there, but if you kind of chop your cut up, that should help kind of peck at it. You can always put these in a boring head as well and get bigger diameters uh, on your chamfering and uh, if you're doing holes. 
So it's another nice feature on it. And like I say, you can make that shank as long as you want, but the longer that shank gets, there we go, it's through. The longer that shank gets, uh, the less rigidity you're gonna have in it. We'll measure that hole real quick and see what size that is. He's leaving a super finish, one of the best I've seen in Coro. Ah, and that one's cutting one inch 250 right uh, right on the nose. Maybe maybe two tenths over. One two fifty and two tenths, so that's good. What I'm gonna do next, real quick. If you can see this screw, this one uh, came from Miltech and it's a shaped screw on there. And uh, I don't know what they cost, but usually they cost quite a bit more. I want to show you how you can just take a regular flathead screw and uh, very easily uh, make these. So what I got is I got me a little arbor over here. Uh, tapped on the end. It's just a, three, a piece of 3 8 drill rod. And what I got is I just screw that in. Like I say it's a 3 8 drill rod with a 1032 tapped in. And what you do is you just take that arbor with the screw, you stick it in a drill, and just set up an angle. And grain it down. And to make it pretty, I'll go over to this wheel. And we'll take the sharp edge off as well. Okay, here's what we got with the screw. That was made real quick out of just a flat head. And so you can see how the flat head goes in and you can see chips will get up underneath it and cause a problem on this insert. So that, that's just a regular flat head screw. We'll put the one that we ground down in now. You can see now that the chips will hit that and just deflect right off. And so I can always grind that a little bit deeper if I want, but that'll, that'll work just perfect. And so this is, you know, if you don't want to wait on an order, you don't want to pay a lot of extra money for screws, that's a simple way. You just get your box of 1032s and just sit there and make up a bunch of them. Uh, one other thing, when you use these Miltech inserts, they're some of the best on the market in my opinion. <clears throat> when you use these Miltech inserts, uh, the, one thing I've learned from experience is you definitely want to use anti-seize in there because they will tighten right up on you and uh, you don't want that to happen. So they're even tight using anti-seize. But uh, uh, here we got another cutter. We got the uh, uh, one inch one. Now we got an inch and a quarter. And uh, like I say, you can sit there and drill some nice holes out real quick if you don't have a a set of bigger drills. You can make these real simple. I just made that out of some scrap A2. Uh, you can make them whatever sizes you want in step drill uh, up to big diameter. You get big enough diameter you can put a pocket on one side, you can put a pocket on the other side. In a future video we may be doing that with one that I already got designed. And, uh, and again you can use them for chamfering. You'll be able to use them for drilling holes. Uh, I haven't tried it yet but I'll have to try the chopping and see how that works with this. I think it'll work real good for making slots. So anyhow, that will be all for today, and we'll see you next time.